Good evening, everybody. Good evening, councillors. Good evening to all those watching us live on Facebook. And welcome to our virtual meeting of Doris Town Council. Thank you to all of those of you who have joined the meeting this evening and watching live elsewhere. To ensure that this meeting runs as smoothly as possible, all participants will be muted by the town clerk and can only be unmuted by the town clerk on my instruction. Those councillors wishing to speak should either raise their hand or if you click on participants, Oh, Chairman, I think you've muted for some reason. There we go. Right, thank you. Um, so you're, the, if you raise the virtual hand, the town clerk will then assist me with the order of debate as we consider tonight's agenda items. However, please bear in mind that I can't see the order of the hands going up, so please be patient. Thank you. I'm sure that this will not be the case this evening, but should there be any disruption to the meeting, the individual will be warned once by myself, and if the disruption continues, I will ask the town clerk to remove them from the meeting. Those being removed will not be permitted to re-enter. Virtual meetings will be recorded and live streamed, and therefore, should you not wish for your image to be recorded, please turn your camera off now. I'd now like to begin the meeting, starting with number six on the four information page about the recording of the meeting. So, as I've just said, recording this meeting, it is being recorded. Public participation, members of the public will be given an opportunity to address councillors present at this meeting regarding items on the agenda at the discretion of me, the chair. Members of the public will also be given an opportunity to discuss town council activities not on the current agenda after the close of the meeting. The comments of members of the public and electors of the parish who speak before the start of the meeting or following the close of the meeting will not form part of the minutes of the meeting. Okay, so turning over, um, can I just ask, are there any members of the public who wish to speak at, at this meeting, who wish to ask any questions? No. Okay, thank you. So turning over then onto page three, um, I'll ask the town clerk, do we have any apologies for absence, please? Just an apology from Councillor James, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sure we all accept that apology. Thank you. Um, agreement of the agenda between parts one and part two. So this evening we do have a, a part two, um, at which point I will ask the members of the public and the press to, to leave. Um, so do we have any other questions? Can we agree the agenda parts one and two? Okay, thank you. So declarations of interest um, to declare any disclosable interest relating to forthcoming items of business, if there are any, have any been offered for this evening? Please raise your hand if you have any. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Moving on. Um, item number four then, dispensations to receive and consider requests for dispensations if there are any. None received, Chairman. Thank you. Okay then, so minutes, um, which you will see in your pack pages seven to ten, to approve, sign and adopt the minutes of the Town Council meeting, which was held on the 3rd of August 2020. Um, welcome, Councillor Woods. Thank you for joining us. So, do I have um, approval from councillors here um, to adopt the minutes of that meeting? Please raise your hand if you adopt them, approve of them. Okay, thank you. Um, can I just ask Councillor Dawson if you could say if you approve, please? Chairman, I can't see Councillor Dawson in, is in the meeting currently. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so we've 
voted to adopt those meeting those minutes of that meeting okay thank you moving on then item number six um minutes of the committees for adoption so first of all to receive the minutes of the civic communities committee meeting which was held on the 18th of march um councillor moorhood please uh yes um, Madam Mayor, I would like to bring, put forward the minutes of the Civic Communities meeting, 18th of March, for adoption, please. Thank you. And do I have a second for that, please? Raise a hand. Thank you. Do we all ado adopt those, approve of those? Thank you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Moving on then um, to adopt the minutes of the Finance and General Purposes Committee held on the 27th of February. Um, can I have um, the chair of that meeting to put those forward, please? Councillor Wrigley. I'd like to um, uh, put forward the minutes of the meeting of the Finance and General Purposes Committee on the 27th of February, which feels like an awfully long time ago, um, and to, uh, uh, to the uh, council for adoption, please. Thank you. And can I have a second for that, please? Thank you. All in favour? Perfect. Thank you. And then to have to um, approve for adoption the minutes of the planning committees held on the 18th of June, the 9th of July and the 30th of July for adoption, please. Um, can I ask the Chair, um, Councillor Goodman Bradbury? Madam Mayor, I'd like to present the meeting, planning meeting minutes for the 18th of June, the 9th of July and the 30th of July this year for adoption and acceptance by the committee, please. Thank you. And can I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Taylor. All in favour, please. Please raise a hand. Perfect. Thank you. Um, item number seven, then, the town clerk's report, please. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the 31st of August was the deadline for Town and Parish Council submitting their ADAR documentation, which we did um, back in uh, late June, early July. So we should now be hearing any day from the external auditors on um, their report on our finances for the last financial year. So that will be brought to members' attention once we've received it. Um, the 23rd of September is the website accessibility compliance deadline and we're making good progress with our new website. Uh, we're currently writing the content for the pages and adding images and various things. So that's all on schedule to be in place by the 23rd of September. Uh, if you haven't noticed, today's meeting's agenda pack has been uh, crafted by ModernGov, our committee management software. We're still going through uh, the system and getting everything in place which should go live um, in conjunction with the new website but um, hopefully it's going to make um, huge efficiency savings for us so we're, we're looking forward to using that um, more fully. We've also received a certificate of grateful recognition um, from the VJ Day 75 committee for the council taking part in the commemorations uh, and we've got the certificate in the office and the drive-in cinema event that's taking place between uh, on Friday and Saturday and a drive-in church service on Sunday still has tickets available at £10 a ticket per car. Uh, we've got some great films being shown. We've got Moana, Toy Story 4, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocket Man, and Downton Abbey. Um, so if anybody um, would like a ticket or you know of anybody that would like a ticket, then get in touch with the town council or visit our website and Facebook pages for links to purchase those tickets online. We can do it over the phone provided the person gives us the okay to do it for them and take a car payment. Um, but uh, we'd be more than happy to do that. So tickets available and hopefully it will be a really good um, successful event. Our first foray into the drive-in cinema world. So if anything, it's been a good learning experience so far. And that's all from me, Chairman. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you. Um, and now we come on to my um, report. Oh, Chairman, I believe Councillor Wrigley has a question. Sorry, Councillor Wrigley, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. It, it, it's more of a, I've just had a message from Councillor Dawson. I'm just reading it now. Trying to get back into the meeting because there was a confusion. I think she was labelled as uh, Councillor Woods for some odd reason at the beginning. 
and having been expelled, having been taken out of the meeting, she's having difficulty getting back into the meeting. Yeah, I will try and get her back in and work in the background quietly. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so now we go on to my um, report. Um, my report has been circulated, you will have all have seen that. Um, but I would just like to add that I was honoured to attend the, the BJ anniversary day. Um, I was honoured to attend that on the 15th of August. Um, last week I was very sad to hear that the, um, the last house of the Railway Convalescent Homes charity, Bridge House, was closing. Um, for over 100 years they've been welcoming guests for convalescence and hospitality here in Dawlish and I feel very lucky to have um, at my point of need stayed there for a couple of weeks so I've experienced the wonderful hospitality there and I'd just like to um, wish all the staff there the very best for the future and I hope that a viable future can be found for Bridge House. And then this last weekend, I'd like to thank the projects officer, Angie Weatherhead, for organising that excellent entertainment on the lawn um, with the Punch and Judy and the Flea Circle. It was very, the Flea Circus, sorry, I'm garbling my words. It was very well attended on both Sunday and Bank Holiday Monday with people social distancing on the lawn and it was a very good day, very good entertainment. So thank you. I can see two hands have been raised. I think Councillor Lowther had hand raised and Councillor Powers. Councillor Lowther, please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I just wanted to support your um, sorrow with the loss of Bridge House. It's a, it is a great loss to Dawlish. I remember that when I was mayor, of, I don't know, whenever it was, 11, 12, something like that, I met Prince of there to bless an enlargement of it to all things. And he seemed particularly sad that so soon after we're, we're, we're losing it. A great loss, and I'm sorry to hear it's going. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lowther. Councillor Powers, please go ahead. Can I just uh, agree with you, Terry? I, I was also privileged on that particular day, so it is very sad. Uh, I was just going to uh, make a comment on BJ Day. Um, I feel that uh, for whatever reason, COVID and whatever, it wasn't given quite as much prominence as it should have been. It was the end of the war. There were many, many people out there, including my brother-in-law who fought in Burma, um, and I just felt that it was lovely to be around the War Memorial with those of us who could make it. But I felt from the comments I heard afterwards, there were a lot of people just didn't realise it was that particular day or how important it was. Thank you, Councillor Powers. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to item nine. On the next page, um, County Councillors' Report. So, um, a report has been circulated by um, Councillor Clapworthy. He isn't present at the meeting this evening. Um, do any councillors wish to make any comments about that? You will have all seen it, it's been circulated. Okay, thank you. Um, um, Councillor Heath has a question. Sorry, Councillor Heath, I didn't see your hand. Please go ahead. Um, it may not be appropriate at this moment. If not, I'll stop and come back at the end. Um, but I did have a conversation with uh, Councillor Patworthy today um, about the car crash. Now, I don't know whether it's on his report, because it obviously won't, because it's, uh, this has happened yesterday. Um, are most of us aware about the crash on the 379 on the hill? Um, anyway, basically, um, we're not sure what the cause of it was, but it was pretty bad. Um, and um, Councillor Malford also, when we went on our walk, we were going to add, put slow signs on, on the road. And when I was talking to him, he said he's going to put that forward to the officer so that we have down that hill slow signs, because it's very unusual, but a very dangerous bend. 
which cars go too fast, it's too narrow and too big vehicles come. It's not a bend sign, it's not a slow sign. So uh, hopefully he will get that approved, but he's gave me permission to mention it as he um, is not going to be here, but hopefully that will be okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Heath, for raising that. And um, I, I will take those, I will make a note of those points and we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, in, we'll try to ensure that we, that we push that forward. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so then moving on to district councillors' reports. Um, do our district councillors wish to, to speak? I know we've had um, the report already circulated by Councillor Linda Petherick. Thank you. Um, do any other district councillors wish to speak? Go ahead, please, Councillor Wrigley. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to briefly touch on a few points because it is an unusual time and Teambridge is facing an awful lot of difficulties in terms of, of recovery. I think we're all familiar with the, the money aspect, but my particular responsibility at Teambridge involves housing and I just wanted to cover housing a little bit. You'll all be aware that uh, we achieve affordable housing or so-called so-called affordable housing through um, section 106 agreements when developers are building houses and they, they build affordable houses along with the big estates that they're building. In the first three months of this year we will have received virtually none because obviously all the building has stopped. That doesn't mean that people don't need more affordable houses. We are not anticipating that we're going to manage to catch up a whole quarter's delivery in the next part of the year. We are looking at all sorts of problems of reducing the numbers that we're getting across Teambridge. When you look at that and you combine that with the amount of redundancies that we're seeing and the amount of financial difficulties that we're seeing people in, across the patch. We are a little concerned and there is, it, there is a, a, a potential for problems with housing, for problems with finances for people in Dawlish. When you add on to that, that whilst there has been a rental evictions holiday, in other words, nobody can be thrown out of their rented house, um, that comes to an end at the end of this month. Happily, it's been extended by a month because had it been at the end of last month, we would have seen a range of people homeless at Christmas time because that's when it would, the process would have worked through. So what with that coming to an end, with furlough coming to an end, with a lack of delivery of new affordable housing, and then you add on top of that the changes in planning permission. So there are new permitted development rights that allow people to change use of shops to houses, which is good. Um, it also allows people to put second floors, third floors, two extra floors, in fact, onto many types of housing, just under permitted development. But the new zonal planning scheme that is being um, proposed by the government at the moment, and there's a consultation uh, going on, removes many of the smaller sites from the need to deliver affordable housing. It has a suggestion that less than 50 houses will not actually have any affordable housing attached to it. So we are looking at the delivery of homes, the delivery of affordable homes across the patch and how we can make things better, deliver more, actually do things to help along with an emphasis on what Teambridge can do to help in terms of the economy and help in terms of delivering jobs. We have a busy time at Teambridge ahead and there will be things that we will be um, asking to work with the town councils to do and working in cooperation is going to be so much more necessary to actually help us build a recovery, which is what our next task is going to be. Slightly sombre, but I just wanted to make people aware that we have some difficult times ahead and we have to play our part in doing what we can to actually help build that recovery 
and make Dawlish better. But thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wrigley. Thank you for that. Any other reports? Yes, Councillor Taylor, please go ahead. Do you want to... Um... There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, just to uh, respond, if you like, uh, also to uh, what Councillor Wrigley has just uh, been talking about, uh, particularly with regard to affordable housing. Yes, there's been a government white paper uh, planning for the future. Um, it's been because of August uh, holidays. Uh, I've yet to be briefed by officers what uh, what it may mean. Um, there's uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of it's a quite comprehensive document. It's uh, it's effectively turning turning uh, planning upside down. Really, uh, build 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 seems to be the order of the day. Uh, but there's nothing that uh, the um, uh, building industry hates more is uh, is uh, uh, is where we've got uh, where, where we don't know what we what where we where it's not known what what the way forward is. They they don't like uh, they don't like that, and I'm wondering whether actually um, because of this uh, hiatus that we may have in in planning that actually things might slow down a bit. Certainly in terms of uh, the affordable housing sites, uh, the 40 to, to 40 to 50 home sites where perhaps planning permission had already been given uh, and that uh, bu building was expected to proceed and to deliver affordable housing. Uh, we may see new applications coming forward now with no affordable housing uh, in those and that, that, will, that will have an effect of, of, of stopping housing altogether on those sites. So, so um, it's difficult to Difficult times, certainly, and for 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 uh, for, uh, for planning and for construction. Uh, although there does seem to be uh, on the ground um, a, a bit of a, a bit of a mini boom going on. I think that's that's probably as much to do with uh, getting completions ahead of any changes uh, as it is catching up on the on the time lost uh, this spring. Uh, so there are three pillars um, with, with it within this uh, white paper. Uh, planning for development, planning for beautiful and sustainable places, planning for infrastructure and connected places. Um, there are some good points to, to you know, that, that, that are applauded. Uh, it's understood that uh, the cost uh, of operating this new system is to fall to landowners and developers and, uh, and not the taxpayer. Well, uh, that would be nice if that, if that uh, happens, uh, as would uh, perhaps uh, fixed uh, costs for land, uh, so, but this, but also the, what the, what communities may lose is um, the community infrastructure levy, which uh, is currently accruing to uh, to many of the new houses that are being built. Uh, also, section 106, both section 106 and SIL uh, are proposed to be abolished, and for an infrastructure levy uh, to be uh, to to be taken forward instead. Uh, which will include for, for roads, for hospitals, for um, uh, for health care, elderly health care, as I understand it. Um, so, uh, it, so it is a very wide-ranging white paper. I've yet to have uh, a, a, a sit-down or a Zoom meeting uh, with officers. Hope to bring all of that forward to uh, the planning to the um, uh, town council meeting in October. Uh, and the uh, date for the consul consultation um, ends uh, on this uh, on the 29th of October. So, so the October meeting, I'll, I'll have a fu much fuller report uh, on on the white paper and uh, what it may mean for for us as a town council. Uh, I think we might be expected to have uh, more of the same or work to do um, on paperwork, of course. But uh, there we are, um, all part of the fun. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Thank you for your reports. Um, Councillor Moorhead, did I see your hand was raised earlier? Were you going to, or do you, do any other district councillors wish to make a report? Or did you have a question, Councillor Moorhead? Please yes, go ahead. I, I just wanted to ask Councillors Taylor and Wrigley whether um, they think that uh, developers are going to make more haste now to develop land they're sitting on in view of the fact that just this morning it was on the national media 
a report that house prices have risen, I think, by 2% very recently and for unfathomable reasons. But although we'd be getting fewer um, of so-called affordable housing, and it's very depressing, but I'm just hoping that that might mitigate some of it. I just wonder what you thought. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood. Um, do Councillor Wrigley or Councillor Taylor wish to reply to that? Please go ahead, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think uh, uh, Councillor Wrigley actually did have his hand up bef before I did, so I hope. But oh, I, I hope you won't mind. I can't my... see the order, <laughs> Okay, but uh, I, I, um, I hope I'm. Uh, we, we may, we may uh, be wanting to say pretty much the same things, but, uh, uh, but in turn, in, it, it is surprising that the nationwide uh, have uh, have announced that uh, house prices uh, have 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 gone up um, that may be because there's there's fewer houses on the market i think a lot of people uh, aren't aren't uh, showing wanting to show people their houses at the moment um it, it may be a blip uh, maybe um maybe not uh, so we're, i think we'll just have to wait and see but from from my my point of view, from as, as i as i said uh, earlier um, my concern is that the changes are so wide ranging that uh, there, there may be a hiccup in the in the housing market. I hope there isn't. I hope we can continue to to build, and I hope we can continue to build the right sort of houses uh, for the, for those people who, who especially for those people who need them the most. You know, our our, our sons and daughters. Uh, you know, they, they all they, every, everyone deserves to have a nice place to live and. Um, you know, I'd hope we can continue to build those sort of houses here. Thank um, you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Wrigley? Uh, yes, and, and, and thank you, thank you, uh, Councillor Taylor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to, to, to add to that, yes, there has certainly been a flurry. I've heard of people whose houses have sold within hours of them deciding to sell it before it even gets to the estate agent. And um, I think there has been a rush of people trying to to get the houses that have been available. I think there's been pent up demand for those people who have been desperate to move um, and for those houses that were prevented in their completions in the early days. It is slightly concerning that you also read reports, um, I think it was the Telegraph today was saying government was predicting a 16% uh, a drop in house prices later in the year. So I think we are seeing a market that is in turmoil. I think it's unusual situation. If you stop a, um, a flow, if you dam a river and then you remove the dam, you'll get an immediate rush, but you're not sure after that immediate tidal wave, whether you then get a, um, a continuation or a drought or, or, or what. So, I mean, it's going to be confusing for a while and things will move, but the uh, prospect of um, the economic situation would point to a reduction in a slightly longer term, but it's impossible to guess, impossible to know, and time will tell. We've got to uh, be prepared either way. Thank you. Councillor Petherick, please go ahead. I think what we've got to remember is that the reason that the property market is moving so much at the moment is the break in stamp duty. People have moved um, a lot because they're taking advantage of the stamp duty break. Um, my daughter's looking at a new house because they're thinking about the same thing. So the movement in the, in the market at the moment has been largely down to the break in stamp duty, I think. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any other district councillors' reports? Okay, so we'll go on to town councillors' reports. Um, we've had the report circulated. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood, for your report. Um, do any councillors wish to raise any points? Please raise a hand if you'd like to. Councillor Powers, please go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say um, that uh, how many compliments I've had about the railway um, and uh, right along the railway th this summer. 
Um, people who I'm quite certain have never walked it before have been walking it um, and now are looking forward to the next stage. Um, I just would uh, like to, to thank uh, Network Rail um, for their presentation and, and all the work they've done so far. And certainly, I think it, the seafront looks really nice. Thank you, Councillor Powers. Thank you. Any other councillors wish to make reports or anything? Okay. Uh, Councillor Main, please go ahead. Um, I'm not making a report. I just want to ask, and I suppose this must be the best time to ask it, when will we be able to get our meetings back in the chambers? I don't like these Zoom meetings. And that's a, that's a question for Andrew, really, but I thought it was the only time to bring it in. Okay, thank you, Councillor Main. Andrew, please. Yeah, Chairman, the um, government guidance is clear at the moment that where you're able to meet remotely, or you have the means to meet, to meet remotely, you should continue to do so, unless there are absolutely no alternative methods to be able to meet um, and as we can meet remotely then we shouldn't be meeting in person now I, I know that does sort of fly against the fact that other groups could meet in the manor house um, and you can have groups meeting in different situations but as it stands the regulations and the government guidance is clear that council meetings should not be meeting in person as they have alternative means to do so thank you thank, thank you, you Andrew. okay Thank you. So if there aren't any other councillors wishing to speak, um, then we'll move on to the next item, which is item number 12, Local Government Services Pay Agreement 2020-2021. Um, and this is to note that the Local Government Services Pay Agreement has been reached between the national employers and the NGJC Trade Union. Um, Andrew, do you wish to make any comments? Uh, Chairman, there's nothing much more to say other than what's printed in the agenda. It's something that takes place every year for a number of years. Um, uh, from 2010, it was a zero increase for a few years. Then it was capped at 1% for a few years. Um, this is now being um, put in by the national employers and the trade unions and a compromise has been reached. Uh, at 2.75 and that's now been accepted by the majority of the trade unions that are involved uh, therefore it's backdated to the 1st of April which is the start of the tax year and also the increase in annual leave entitlement is also commensurate from the 1st of April. Okay thank you thank you that's that's good so our, 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 um, our it's on the agenda that we note that um, Councillor Powers I can see you've You've got your hand raised. Please go ahead. But I was just going to propose as chairman of staffing that we note this report, and I'm sure somebody will second me. Thank you. Quite a few. Quite a few are happy to, to second you. So um, can I um, ask for a vote of in favour of that? Please raise your hand. You, Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, Moving on then to item number 13, um, the draft review of the statement of licensing policy, um, which has been circulated, the papers have, um, pages 19 and 20 in your packs, um, to consider whether the Town Council wish, wishes to submit representations as part of the review being undertaken by the District Council. Um, and the full statement of licensing policy can be viewed online. Um, do any councillors or our district councillors wish to make any comments on that, please? Councillor Ridley, Chairman. Oh, Councillor Ridley, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, it, it, it's a little bit difficult. I haven't managed to sit down with the old and the new to see what has changed in, in the policy. Um, but I don't think in my scanning through that it actually helped us in the uh, much needed uh, um, uh, um, review that we actually need here. So I would like to suggest that we do put something forward as a town council. So um, we have um, one particular uh, um, issue that comes up time and again, which is to do with a persistent late license 
which doesn't seem to come up for review and it seems to be a permanent late license for an establishment that is causing issues in the town. So I would like to see the, um, the licensing uh, uh, policy actually see what we can do about uh, reviewing such late licenses to see if they are problematic, which I think ours can be at times. Thank you, Councillor Ridley. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to support that and and second um, second your proposal. Do any other councillors wish to make any comments? Councillor Moorhood, please, and then Councillor Terry Lowther. Councillor Moorhood first. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, I looked through it. I can't say I've digested it. It's quite complicated. Um, but I didn't see anywhere where there's any reference to truly local input. And I suspect that's what's being referred to previously by Councillor Wrigley. Uh, I think every community has maybe uh, problems of one kind or another due to different kinds of licensing, because this isn't just to do with alcohol, it's to do with all kinds of licensing. And... Um, I'd be happy if someone could correct me and say that there is somewhere where an, a particular, any particular community can make a, a specific request. Um, I'd like to see some, something in there that allows that, if it isn't already there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood. Um, I'll go to Councillor Terry Lowther first. Would you go ahead, please? Okay, well, uh, maybe a general observation to start with. <clears throat> As a, an old, in the real sense of the world, licensing magistrate, um, I'm, I'm sorry to see it come out of the courts and uh, go to local authorities, to be honest, because it's become much more complicated and much more distant, and I support Councillor Moorhood's uh, remarks on that. Um, we all know there are problems with one or two um, hostelries in the town. I think that's already been subject to review. I have a feeling that the decision has already been made underneath these regulations, but I, but I might be wrong. It's, it's always worth looking again. I, I do feel <coughs> that we ought to have more local input into uh, regulations. Um, there's a sort of general nod towards be nice to the neighbours, but in fact it's rarely given very serious consideration because what happens in Dordish is it's going on somewhere in Holliton or whatever. And so there's already precedent and, and so on, it's, it's hardly considered. Um, I'd like to, yes, I, I agree that we should make a representation and I think we should be looking at more local input into decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lowther. Um, any other comments, please? Councillor Heath, please go ahead. It raises a little bit of a question here. I'm slightly puzzled, so perhaps somebody could help me. At the present moment, who is the licensing authority, say, for a local uh, public house? Is it Teambridge? Yes. Or it is. It's not Devon County. No. Right. Well, I'd be grateful if perhaps in the next meeting they could come back and give us the responsible person and give us more clarity on this so that we can easily raise our questions because it looks as if quite a few of us have got slight issues and, and yet we seem to be not quite sure how we can raise the query. So if there's a particular officer at Teambridge that deals with it, or what, so that we can be clear, all of us know who to actually contact. Thank you, Councillor Heath. Um, I see that they're asking for comments to be made on their website to this um, consultation by the 16th of October, but maybe one of our district councillors might know um, who, who it is at, at Teambridge District Council or any other comments? Yeah, be helpful. So, Thank Chairman, you. Could, could I just ask Councillor Heath to repeat his request? I, I understand that having somebody come and talk to us, was that the premise of your question? Um, not so much that. If we've got a query, say a person in the area comes and says as their councillor, 
I need something done about this. Um, I personally don't know who I would contact. Would it be you? Would it be uh, one of our district councillors? Would I go direct? Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of fuzziness, which I just think perhaps I need some training, which I'm happy to do. But um, I don't actually know who I would contact. And that would just be, and I think that could be the feeling of a few of us, not all of us. Some of us are long in the tooth and know exactly what to do. But um, I would just like the clarity, if there is a discussion, um, we now know it's Teambridge. Um, how do we put forward a problem? Chairman, if, if I may? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Chairman, I think, Councillor Heath, you've got one of three ways of going about it. You can either approach one of the district councillors to take the matter forward on your behalf. Um, you can either contact myself to get in touch with the responsible person at Teambridge, or you can contact the licensing department direct. And their email address is licensing at teambridge.gov.uk. Um, their licensing manager, Andrea Furness, is an authority on licensing matters. Um, and she'd be very amenable to helping any situation that may arise that you, you know, you're aware of. So those would be your three options. Thank you for that clarity. Thank you, Councillor Heath. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor Plows, I saw you had your hand raised. Please go ahead. Well, I used to sit on the licensing uh, panel at District Council, and I must say, our, Andrew has given us the, the correct advice, but I think it's personally think it's much easier to go directly to the licensing department at Teambridge because that is where the district council or anybody else will go anyway. So if you're trying to get something sorted out quickly, it's any, any member of the public, it doesn't have to be a councillor, has the right to write to the licensing department if they have a query or a problem or a worry. It isn't inclusive just to councillors. Thank you, Councillor Prowse. Councillor Petherick, Linda Petherick, um, I see you've got your blue hand raised. Please go ahead. Um, I agree with Terry, really shouldn't, should never have gone to, to district because it's very difficult. But one of the, and I also agree that we need some clarity around it, but I have spoke to the licensing over, over one establishment. And what, what comes out of it is, you can say to them till you blew in the face you know this is happening but unless you've got evidence actual evidence they will not do anything about it because they are not breaching any licensing laws so there's lots of issues around this um, and the main one being that if you are going to take something to licensing you need to have evidence to back it up Okay, thank you, Councillor Petherick. Any other comments, please? Councillor Moorhead, did you have your hand raised? Please go ahead. Um, I would just add that I know of one particular problem area where individuals have provided evidence to the police as well, but it doesn't seem to change anything at Timbridge via the licensing uh, authority. And that's why I think that there ought to be some kind of clause that allows um, local communities through their parish councils, their town councils, there should be some channel for, um, as you say, evidence and or a list of complaints or problems which have arisen to be taken directly concerning any particular area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood. So, yes, Councillor Lather, Terry Lather, please go ahead. Only just, just to say that, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Um, I, I could never understand really why licensing was taken out of the magistrate's court and taken to uh, local authorities. Um, it's become very much more complicated. I, I'm just saying that it's nowhere near as easy to sort yourself out. At one time, you used to have a a local court where you, you had a bunch of magistrates, the, the policemen and all the rest of it, who turn up with these problems and you had to have evidence, but you got a decision on the day, you got a decision, decision in most cases, 10 quid. Now it takes an awful long time to go through a lot of authority and it's a very expensive business for licensees to do so. Um, and I sometimes suspect that the real motivation was not so much to 
improve the control of licensed companies is another thing, but to increase money coming in um, from the licensees, from the licensing trade. It's been very difficult for them. I, I know you talk to a licensee and they tell you how expensive it is compared to the old days, and also how difficult it is to get things sorted out from their point of view. They have trouble sometimes. They, they want something out of, uh, out of their license. And licenses are generally written so broadly that um, it's very difficult to put your finger on exactly what you need done. Because, I mean, for instance, we're talking about a reference was made earlier, very long licensing, late licensing law. If you look at the regulations, they virtually favour late licensing laws, um, very much against the principles that they used to be. Well, then again, I'm, I'm, I'm biased because I like the old system. But well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lowther. Um, so I think we're, we're all in agreement that we want more um, say as a local council in the licensing. And Councillor Wrigley did make a proposal earlier that we respond to this. Um, so, Councillor Wrigley, would you like to sum up and repeat what you mentioned earlier on in the discussion, please. Um, yes, I think uh, um, it does sound like uh, there is a, a position where we want to have um, a local say on local issues and make local input to, uh, to the decisions that are there. Um, my particular one was, was also to actually have um, reviews on, on some of the more unusual licenses uh, that are currently, as I understand it, on a permanent basis and you need to have a serious amount of um, incidents to actually cause there to be a review because that's an unusual thing to happen. So I think the summary would be that we should, um, we should return a, um, a, uh, um, uh, a representations we should submit representations um, and request that we have uh, local input to uh, the licensing process as a local town council. Um, and um, I'm not sure uh, whether we have agreement for the um, um, other part of looking at the permanent licenses that should be reviewed on a more regular basis as well. Thank you, Councillor Ridley. Okay, so. Councillor Powers, please go ahead, if you have a question. Uh, well, I was just going to, uh, I have uh, absolutely no uh, disagreement with Councillor Wrigley, um, but I would say that if we as a council are going to have an input into this, then all members of council must be trained in licensing. It is, as uh, Councillor Lowther has said, a very complex matter. And before I was able to sit on licensing at district, I went through two set, sets of um, learning process. And, and actually, to be honest with you, I continued to learn while I was sitting on the board. So it isn't just a matter of us as councillors coming in and making these comments. We have to have the knowledge to make these comments. Um, and so therefore we would need good in-depth training. Thank you, okay. Councillor Lauza, another question from you. Go ahead, please. No, I'm not another question. I, I was, um, if that was a, a proposal by Councillor Ridley, um, then I would want to second it. Thank oh. you, Councillor Lauza. Thank you. So, can I ask all councillors in favour of that, please raise your hand? Okay. Thank you. That's everybody. And Councillor Dawson, can I ask you whether you whether you support that, please? I do. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. Thank you. So that's that's unanimous from everybody here present. Thank you. Okay, where are we? Um, item number fourteen: um, bathing water quality. Um, to consider writing to South West Water requesting urgent attention to renewing sewerage drains and tanks so as not to negatively impact the bathing water quality of the parish's beaches. 
Um, this is an important issue for Dawlish, um, both for Dawlish Warren Beach, Dawlish Town Beach, Carton Cove and Holcomb Beach. Um, recently, um, there's been a news article in Devon Live, um, it was a weekend before last, um, including um, mentioning beaches not to swim at because of sewage on the beaches. It did list a couple of beaches in Dawlish then. It was from a report by Surfers Against Sewage. Um, and since seeing that, um, I've been keeping up with Surfers Against Sewage reports, Safer Seas Service app. Um, and it was this weekend that they reported that there was a high level of um, possible pollution at one of our other parish beaches. And so considering that Dawlish attracts many visitors every year and we are a seaside resort and we are also looking at a green recovery. Um, I think this is a really important issue and this could be an opportunity to write to Southwest Water to request that urgent attention um, to renewing the infrastructure to keep a high bathing water quality on our beaches. Um, so that's up for discussion. Any councillors wish to make any comments? Councillor Wrigley, please go ahead. Well, I'm well known in this council for my battles with Southwest Water over the years and uh, uh, getting improvements to the systems throughout, um, throughout Dawlish. Um, and I think it can't hurt to keep the keep the pressure on. Some of the elements of our system are still, um, how shall I put it, antiquated and uh, um, really not up to scratch. And so I think it's, um, uh, whilst I, 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 I know Southwest Water are particularly uh, difficult to get moving and their investment schemes are in five year tranches and it's a long, long battle to get them to change things and to add more infrastructure. I think the more we can uh, write to them and put pressure on them to, to actually do things and to point this out to them, I think the better. So I, I'm, I would wholeheartedly support this and, and propose, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure Madam Chair if you've already made a proposal, but if you haven't, I propose that we do write to them and point out the news reports and ask them for their response. Thank you, Councillor Wrigley. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll accept your proposal. Councillor Heath, please go ahead. Yes, well, first of all, I'd like to second that. And also comment, I was on the far side of the Boat Cove one in, in a corner behind the groin there, the wave breaker. Um, just a couple of days ago, we was clearing some rubbish up there and the smell of sewage was strong. So there was certainly something not right with that beach. Now, it could be um, the fact that we had very, very heavy rain, as you know, on that storm, not that many days before that. And what happens is the water comes down, goes in the retaining tanks, and when it's a massive amount of water, they can't take any more. And then they overspill, obviously, because they've got to go somewhere into the sea. So probably some of that is, as we quite rightly pointed out, the tanks aren't big enough. But with um, climate change, I think we've got a bit of a problem because the tanks would have to be huge to take some of the new heavy rainstorms that we're likely to get. Um, and I don't think they've even been calculated yet. They say we have a hundred year tank put in. You hear these developments, well, they're not a hundred years. But what, what I've seen, they're gonna last about 25 years because this is the way the weather's going. So um, I don't have a solution for it. Obviously there's far too many houses, but, um, all the new properties do normally have soakaways, which obviously is good, but there is still all the old housing stock, the, the, the drains go into, the, the, sorry, the rainwater goes into the drains, and that's really the problem. Um, so, uh, you know, if they did do bigger tanks, it would solve a lot, but that's many hundreds of thousands of pounds to spend on that. But we should ask, and I've seconded it. 
Thank you, Councillor Heath. Thank you. Um, and before we go to a vote, Councillor Moorhood, I see you've got your hand raised. Please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just to add a few things, a uh, few aspects of this. I pick up on the point that Councillor Wrigley said about um, Sussex Water being difficult and tardy. 18 years or so ago, I was one of the people who started DARE. And over the following years, we tried to get Southwest Water to take into account all the proposed future development, which is now with us and had been increased. They never did it. They, they've tinkered with things. So my fear is that they, they haven't got the, the capacity, regardless of all the extra problems with climate change and flash floods, they haven't got the capacity to begin with. And what they do have is uh, the authority to discharge into the sea at when they can't cope. I believe there are some changes coming with that, but I don't know the details of legislation. However, it always seems to be, and there is a reason for it, it always seems to happen round about bank holiday weekends and weeks in August and July, particularly August. And when you think about it, we have hundreds more people, many hundreds more, who come on holiday here. And they all have input, shall we say, into the sewage system. So we are in a particular situation here where we not only have increased uh, permanent residential development, we also have a large influx, thankfully, of tourists. We're in a particular situation, and I think Southwest Water really should take this into account and try to do something about it, not just literally dump it when they can't cope. Thank you, Moore, Councillor Moorhood. Thank you. Councillor Petherick, John Petherick, sorry, I see you've got your blue hand raised. Please go ahead. Oh, you can hear me now, yes, okay? Yes, yes, yes. yes thank yes, you. Sorry about that. I, there was a slight glitch. Um, yes, I, I agree with everything that's been said. I, I think that the infrastructure in Dawlish um, is, isn't that antiquated. It's only probably in, uh, installed probably 12, 20 years ago um, and lots of houses have been added since then. But we're in an unfortunate position because we have an estuary either side of us and we have the river door as well flowing into the sea. Now the, the estuary is either side of us, one serves Exeter and the other one serves Newton Abbott. And it is a pretty well-known fact that if there's a complication with heavy rainfall, uh, the sewage treatment plant at the upper reaches of the team will discharge into the team, and that can be a complication. So, so I think that possibly the infrastructure in Dawlish is okay, or okay-ish, but it's either side of us that the problems are. Um, I can give you an example. If you go down to Babicombe and, and, and Torquay, the waters there are crystal clear because there isn't any discharge from the land in, into the sea there. So it's the estuaries either side of us and the sewage treatment plants on those estuaries that might be contributing to the problem. Okay, thank you, Councillor Petherick. Um, any other councillors wishing to um, make any comments before we go for a vote? Because we've had the proposal which has been seconded. Any other councillors wishing to comment? Please raise your hand. I'm just checking for blue hands, but I can't see any blue hands either. Okay, so um, we'll take a vote then, please, on um, con writing to Southwest Water, requesting urgent attention. All councillors in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. Um, and councillor. Dawson, would you like to speak and say how your vote? Are you pleased? Absolutely for in agreement. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. Councillor Goodwin Bradbury, sorry, I, your hand was raised. Please go ahead. Did you wish to speak? Please go ahead. No, I was voting, but there's a there's a bit of a break up on the system, so okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we all supported that unanimously. Thank you. Okay, next page. Um, item number 16. So this is Dawlish Minor Injuries Units. 
um, this is to consider writing to the clinical commissioning group asking Lemon. for clamp. I, th I think we've skipped over item 15. Where? On page oh, four. Sorry, yes. Sorry, it's going dark. That's my mistake. Sorry, it's going dark in here. Um, I, going back to then item number 15, um, mental health and suicide prevention working group. Um, to consider and approve the draft publication sub submitted by the working group for print and choose a design of the front page from the enclosed options. So thank you very much to Councillor Tamlin and all the members of the um, working group for their hard work in putting this leaflet together. Um, I'm sure councillors have all had a chance to have a look at it. Um, it's full of really good information and a lot of su support groups that I've, that I've looked up um, from the information through the websites. I think it's excellent. Um, so um, I'll open this up for councillors to make their comments. Councillor Tamlin, please, please go ahead. This is thanks to you and your working group. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Uh, I assume that you have all read my report explaining why we have produced the leaflet, especially during this difficult time. Our intention is to circulate to 6,000 homes in Dawlish and the cost will only be £289 for printing with volunteers delivering. We hope you like the leaflet and you would like the working group and we would like you to, to, and you would like the working group to continue. I also highlighted some of the topics that we could, that we like, would like to look at next. And safe talk training is top of our list. I'd just like to show you now, obviously you've seen it, but here's the leaflet. And this is the um, alternative cover um, of which I think we're going, we're going to let you find out what your preference is. So that's one cover and that's the other cover. I think you've all had copies of that. Uh, I, right. Um, right. Let me just check where I am now. Um, right. I would, I would just like to explain the leaflet. Um, it is a model based on Grassroots, a charity in Brighton and Hove. Grassroots is an award-winning charity and a UK leader on suicide prevention. They believe that suicide can be prevented through open and direct conversation, which is known as safe talk. The pages in our leaflet are intended as a self-help tool, or if someone is concerned about someone else. It is not a leaflet that is intended as a substitute for professional services or frontline workers. The pages contain information about how to find help and support, and anyone with suicide thoughts to seek help from the crisis service, doctors, or mental health service. Thank you very much for listening and are there any questions? Thank you very much Councillor Tamlin, thank you. Uh, do councillors have any questions? I can see Councillor Taylor and then Councillor Wrigley. Councillor Taylor please go ahead. Thank you Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Councillor Tamlin for all of the hard work and for, for the the group to the group too for all of the hard work that have been put in in the production uh, of, uh, of these uh, draft uh, draft leaflets uh, very pleased to also receive uh, a, a copy hard copy from uh, from the from the office uh, and uh, I must say uh, that uh, yeah they, they they do they, they are quite arresting they're good you know if, if, if one was to come through through my uh, my door I'd, i i would i would read it um and i think it it, it does you know it, it it's a very good thing especially at this time 
where we where a lot of people are spending a lot more time indoors um it is it is a difficult a, a difficult time for for everybody in the in the community so so i welcome i welcome these leaflets and i think either of the designs would be would be very good uh, but uh, happy to hear what other people have to say thank you councillor taylor i think councillor wrigley did you have your hand and then i know that councillor linda petherick has blue hands councillor wrigley first uh, thank you madam mayor uh, yes i mean my thanks also go to uh, uh, Councillor Townend and the whole of the group that's been working on this. I think it is an excellent leaflet. I think it, it, it's fantastic work. And uh, from my work at Teambridge with the Community Safety Partnership, I know this is an area where everything will help. And I think this is a, a very good initiative to put this leaflet out across the town and uh, wholeheartedly support that. But more than that, also wholeheartedly support the continuation of the group and the uh, continuing good work that it's going to be doing. Because if you can come together and produce a, a great leaflet like this we can put out, I think you will um, uh, go on and do more things that this council can be proud of and can uh, uh, help the residents of our town. So thank you for all of that. On the design of the cover, um, I... I it, it's an interesting two, uh, an interesting alternative between the two. I was actually going to suggest something that's a mix between the two because I very much liked the text in the bubble on the first one, but I also liked the full colour of the cover of the second one. So I was going to suggest if we could have the text for the "Do You Need Help," which I think is a different yeah. font. To the, uh, to the second one, similar but different. I think the first one stands out more as the text. So the first, first the text with the, the do you need help text from the quotation bubble printed on the solid background would be my suggestion uh, uh, of, of the, um, for the cover. Um, but I'm not sure how we're gonna go through if, if everybody's trying to make small changes like that. But that would be my, my proposal. Thank you, Councillor Wrigley. Councillor Linda Petherick, you've had your ha blue hand raised. Would you like to go ahead? Thank you. Um, the content of the leaflet, the organisations, is brilliant. The text concerns me a bit, but I'll go with with what other people think. I think it it can be a bit scary was how someone described it the cover for me has got to be this one the other one i thought was just too dark and depressing um and this one if i saw this leaflet i would pick it up and have a look at it um as far as the rest of the things that you're talking about doing we have said originally that there were going to be other people on this group and I think we need to now be putting those people on the group because or are we not putting any more people on the group but there for me there should be a few experts on the group you know someone from mind or I don't know from other organisations, but where, why has that disappeared from view now? Um, that's that's what I would say about that, really, and that's it, really. But congratulations, Councillor Tamlin. It's a really good, some really good content in there. Thank you. Um, can I reply to you on 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 the on the group? We would welcome new members into our group. I think with the pandemic that has been delayed. Um, and if you can think back, um, the town clerk was actually going to put something in the paper to attract them. And then they were going to go before council to be interviewed. So it's the pandemic that stopped it, but the group would welcome another four members. Thank you, Councillor Tamlin. So Councillor Prowse has her hand raised and then Councillor Main. Councillor Prowse, please go ahead. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, Yes, uh, Councillor Tamlin, this is excellent work, first class. I'm sure it wasn't as easy as it looks when we pick up the piece of paper to read it all. I'm sure you had a, a lot, of, lot of work to do to get this. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, I, I prefer this one 
because one of the things I learned when I've been looking at leaflets in the past, there are certain colours that are dark that make you think, oh, I don't particularly want to look at that. Whereas this is colourful. And I think if you're in a dark place, you don't want anything dark to look at. That's a personal opinion. But I do know that printers look at things and they're not terribly keen on these sort of dark backgrounds. All these organisations in, in there, I didn't know half of them existed. So that's excellent. I'm really pleased. And I might expect there's some more out there if we only knew about them, but I don't. I, I, I was a little bit concerned about this, and maybe it's just me, but thinking about suicide, worried about somebody, worry about somebody that I understand, but thinking about suicide made me think, well, am I thinking about suicide? So a little bit concerned about the way the way it was worded, but I mean, if everybody else is happy, maybe it's something that's wrong with me. But I I think it makes you think more about whether you're going to commit suicide or not. That might sound awful to some people, but that's just a personal opinion, though, Councillor Tamlin. Thank you, Councillor Prowse. Councillor Main. And then Councillor Rosie Dawson. And Councillor John Padrick, Chairman. Okay, okay, Councillor Main, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, uh, there's a couple of questions I wanted to ask, ask uh, Councillor Tamlin. Um, I think um, Councillor Price has sort of covered what I was going to say. Um, have you had help with the text, Carol? Has somebody advised you of the right word in, or is this something? Yeah, that yeah. We, we we based it on based it on the grassroots model, uh, which is which which um, a lot of um, professional people go on safe talking, and they have proved that um, this is th that you need to put it up front. You need to ask. You need to talk about it, well, not that, to that, hide it. I mean, years ago, you know, we, we, we hid mental health. I mean, yeah. you know, Auntie Thelma had a nerve problem. We didn't talk about mental health, but we're now talking about suicide. And, and um, yes, I've had help from them. I also um, sent a copy to uh, a draft copy to Open Door to see what they felt about it with with their um, clientele and they said yes that's great. I've also, also sent a copy to Nicola um, Glassbrook at Devon County Council who's public health specialist and she's seen it as well and it's been okay. Does that help? Well, yeah oh, yes it does because she, uh, uh, being a novice reading yes. this it's so easy to put thoughts into people's minds that are just bubbling below the surface and uh, the wording's got to be per got to be perfect and if you sort of vice on it that then you know that's fine yeah. with me thank you we, we, thank you for we your did, work we did we did it we did actually tone it down a bit you know um we if you're feeling suicide we said or if you're feeling low as well but um if you see uh, thinking about suicide there's a lot of positive stuff in there really there's some very good paragraphs in there um uh, spend some time thinking about your reasons for living um etc etc if, if you look through it and on uh, on the other side um there's about being honest and listening and it, um, encouraging them to to get help not telling them but going along with them um so if, if you read each one they sort of add up but yeah that is that is used nationally these these comments are used nationally Thank you, Councillor Tamlin. Thank you, Councillor Main. So, Councillor Rosie Dawson, then Councillor John Pedrick, and then Councillor Byron Woods. Councillor Dawson, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that talking about suicide and mental health struggles can always feel difficult, awkward, and frightening for people. Um, during an intense two day approved suicide intervention course, which is the next step up from Safe Talk. It was really clear that asking directly if people are thinking of ending their lives is so, so important in engaging with people and getting people on the road back to safety. People need to be direct. Uh, information that goes out needs to be direct. 
uh, asking someone directly who is not feeling suicidal is not going to make them want to kill themselves and that was very very clear in all the training that I've done. I think this leaflet is direct and inclusive with a dose of kindness and sensitivity. I think it's very important to be listing all the help available in order to hopefully signpost people before they become desperate or low enough to consider ending their lives. And I just wanted to thank the rest of the working group and the chair and particularly Councillor Tamlin for communicating the safety officer at Devon County to ensure that this is hitting the right note. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. Thank you. Um, Councillor John Petherick, please go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I, I mean, I agree. It's, it's, it's quite a good leaflet. I'm impressed with the cost, actually. Is it 6000 for £280? £289 for 7000 actually. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's excellent value. It really yeah. is. I'm, I'm really impressed with that. And we'd like Have to I... come to F&G for that, if that's OK. <laughs> uh, well, uh, OK. But, uh, and, and regarding the wording, I mean, we've got 16 councillors here, or more or less 16, and I think we've all got a different view of how things should be worded. I mean, I'm sort of not totally comfortable, I have to say, but I accept what is there if the majority want to go with it. Uh, and my preferred front page would be this one. You can't, oh, you can see it now, yeah, there you go. I'm freezing. That's my preferred front page. Thank you. Thank you, you Councillor Petherick. Councillor Woods, please go ahead. Um, yeah, um, for the whole working group again, uh, well done. Um, just one thing on it, why is this going to print it? Is there any chance they could look at doing as well as what you're doing? But some small ones, um, there's four pages, um, and I don't know how it's coming out, whether it's from an A4 or A3, et cetera, but just some small yeah. ones. I understand how um, Dawson, uh, Councillor Dawson says you've got to really hit it head on, but also sometimes some people are a bit um, nervous and shy about it as well. And they should have some little ones that they can just pick up from the, the um, a desk somewhere, do you know what I mean? And given over a A4 sheet, if that is the size. So all I'm just saying is in chance you could have some small ones as well. No, it's not a, it's not A4. It's, it's, it is a small one. It's quite a small one, but certainly not A4. It's A5, Chairman. A4 folded in half. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wood. So then Councillor Moorhood and then Councillor Heath and then Councillor Linda Pedrick. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I've been part of the group and I can assure you that a tremendous amount of thought uh, guided by um, Councillor Tamlin has gone into this and uh, professional advice has been asked for and taken. And um, thinking about how the group, she would like the group to, to go forward with the agreement of this full council. Uh, somebody said uh, that we ought to have professional people. I can absolutely be sure myself that nothing would be taken forward without professional people coming, talking, advising or whatever from what I've seen already. Uh, I just would like to draw attention to what I think is a very important part of this uh, leaflet and that it, it, it's so inclusive. I know Councillor Woods said something. I'm just going to be a bit specific. There are things for children, elderly, male, female, migrants, prison leavers, students, homeless. There is advice for anyone with any kind of problem. There is access to help and I think just from that point of view alone, it's a one-stop information uh, port, port, portal. It's just, I think it's brilliant. And I do know a heck of a lot of work went into it. And so it should, because it's such a very important thing. You don't want to give people the wrong information. And I congratulate uh, Councillor Tamlin on getting it to this stage. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood. Thank you. And then Councillor Heath, you had your hand raised. And then Councillor Linda Petherick. Please go ahead, Councillor Heath. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just one little thing. Um, the wording that one or two of us were just puzzling over, but obviously haven't been on the panel, as it were, which is a lot of work. Congratulations. Um, as I used to be a pastor, it is certainly on my heart how we should be looking after people. 
Um, can we just repeat the words again? I haven't I've dropped the leaflet somewhere. Um, thinking of suicide, was it? What was, the, what was that phrase? Thinking of suicide, and thinking then of, the other one is suicide. worried about someone. Right. I agree with, with the experts that, you know, if you're already thinking about it, you're thinking about it. That, that wording won't make you think about it if you're not already. But there are sometimes with language, your ways of saying the same thing, but it comes over slightly different with a nuance on it. Um, just jotting down here, just thinking, we could think about, I'm just literally throwing it to all of us. Um, we're not on the panel, so we haven't had the time to think about it, but how about feeling suicidal? That's less, less of a planting word. We're thinking of suicide is what's called a planting word. Is it, oh, yeah, I am actually, how do I do that? But it's feeling, but it's more about your feelings. It's not really telling you, you should be doing it. Now, as I say, I'm not a mental um, nurse or doctor, so uh, a psychiatrist, so I might be wrong, but I just wondered as we puzzling over it, what do people think? Is it something perhaps uh, the chair of the working group could go back and just ask the opinions of the experts they've already asked mm -hmm. to see whether or not they think that would be slightly less less threatening or not. And so I'm only putting it as forward yeah. you know, to see what you do, think. Do you think um, suicidal thoughts is similar to what you're saying? If it was suicidal thoughts, yeah, that that is yeah, it's exactly the same thing as feeling mm. suicidal. Yeah. Okay. Feeling suicidal thoughts. Yeah, that's that could even be an improvement. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll look at that. It's just only a draft at the moment, obviously. Yeah. So. See what they say. I would say yeah. but run okay. it past a few of the, the, the people. See if they think it's one is better than the other or not. Okay. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor Heath. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tamlin. Um, Councillor Linda Petherick, did you have, still have your blue hand raised? I do still have my hand raised, thank you. Um, I actually agree with um, Councillor Heath, that's, that's a good change to make. Um, and it does, sound, it does sound better. But one thing that I will say, um, you know, we talk about you have to be straightforward. Different people react to different ways of being spoken to. Um, you could get someone that is suicidal and you have to talk to them in a completely different way you have to take into account how each person reacts and are so I, I don't believe that you have the same the same thing for each person um, which may be something that you can take into account when you do your safe talk training but I actually would like to propose that we accept this leaflet with perhaps that one change with this cover um, and say thank you to the group. Thank you, Councillor Petherick. Councillor Moorhood, you had your hand up next. Please go ahead and then Councillor Main. Taking on board what Councillor Heath has said and what Councillor Andrew Petherick's just said, would I be right in thinking that you're talking about this page. At the bottom, it says, if you're experiencing a personal crisis and are unable to cope, or you or someone else is feeling suicidal, there we could put in having suicidal thoughts. thoughts. Yeah. Then it just says, people who care are ready to help. It was yeah. almost there. That's yeah. just the... And in that page, yes, it tells you there are different thing, ways to approach, doesn't it? Yes. It's, it's about as comprehensive as you can get, I think. But that just that, does that, Councillor Heath, does that sort of, that fits what you were saying? On the front page. On the front page, it mm. says, if you're yeah. experiencing a personal crisis and are unable to cope, or you or someone else is, and currently it says feeling suicidal, you could say, having suicidal thoughts, and then it carries on, people who care are ready to help. Does that make, yeah. does that fit? I, yeah, I think it does. But isn't there a separate line still saying feeling suicidal elsewhere inside? No. Um, no. no, you've changed that. 
you've changed that. Yeah, we're going to change oh, that. Right. You see, yeah. but there's nothing right, else. Okay. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's think... that it's that one on the yellow line that says thinking about suicide. We're going to change it. Yeah, change that to mm. suicidal thoughts. Having suicidal thoughts. Or, right. Yeah. Right. I, th I think that does soften it without losing mm. its what you're saying and communicating. I think it is great. Mm. Yep. Okay, thank you. Were there any other councillors wishing to speak before we, um, before we, first of all, approve approve the draft publication and thank Councillor Tamlin and all the members of the working group? And then we go to select the actual front page design. Councillor Main, please go ahead. Um, Councillor Pred Petherick uh, proposed that we accept it with the alterations and I want to second that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So... Then and just before you move to any vote, I did notice yes. Councillor Dawson had her blue hand up, but it does seem to have gone off, but I'll just unmute her just in case she does wish to speak. Okay, Councillor Dawson, please go ahead. No, I'm good. Point was already made. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dawson. So, yes, Councillor Linda Petherick. Please my, pro my proposal was to that we accept this leaflet with the cover as is, with the added change. Okay, thank you. So. Do we take it all as that? Andrew, yes, please. Yeah, Chairman, just before you move to a vote, I just want to clarify, you're obviously um, about to vote on which style of leaflet um, incorporating the suggested amendments that have been made. Yes. Um, Councillor Tamlin, are you also seeking approval from Council for the cost of printing and for it to go out to distribution now? Um, it would seem sensible that you're able to take that decision now rather than waiting until the end of the month for F and GP. So if, if, the, if the leaflet is now at a stage subject to those amendments that it's then complete, um, I would suggest that you then go forward and, and, and hit the ball running, as it were. Yes, please. And I, I could sort of um, contact the person who's running the volunteers and set it up and we can have them out um, October. Well, September, September, get them out as soon as possible. I think that would be excellent. Thank you, Councillor Tamlin. So let's go ahead for a vote on that. We've got a proposal from Councillor Linda Petherick and that was seconded by Councillor Heath, Main. Councillor Main. Main, Chairman. I, I, sorry, just, I think Councillor Taylor wants to speak. I'm not sure. Councillor Taylor, please go ahead. Only to say uh, happy to help with the delivery. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. So can we go for a vote on that, please, then, for the, for the leaflet, for the um, getting it printed and distributed mm -hmm. and with this as a cover? Please, all councillors, raise your hand, please. Thank you. All in favour? And Councillor Dawson, please, could you speak in support or? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. So that's excellent. That's, that's approved. And thanks once again to Councillor Tamlin and all the members of that working group for your hard work. Thank you. Did we, did we, did yeah. we vote on the finance? To cover the cost. Yes, we did. We did. Oh, Within okay. that, yes, yes, we did. Can I thank you all? Thank you. Okay, um, and then I think we're also are we voting on the con continue continuation of the work of the working group um, and um, looking forward for your group to continue with the details as in your report are. No, Councillors. Chair, Chairman, that, did, that didn't form part of the original um, motion on the agenda, so, so no. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll, we'll look at that again in the future then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Councillor Mary Lowther, did you still wish to speak? 
Is that your hand raised? Yes, yes. Um, as I'm of birth to do delivery. I don't oh, Brook Street, no, Brook Street, no Town Street. I, I need those. <laughs> excellent. Thank you very okay. much, Councillor Lowther. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going on to the next item, um, item number 16 on the next page, um, Dawlish Minor Injuries Unit. Um, I am on the correct item now. Um, to consider writing to the cl clinical commissioning group asking for clarification when the Minor Injuries Unit at Dawlish Hospital is to reopen. Um, and I'd like to now ask our rep um, from the council um, on the Coastal Health Working Group um, to introduce this item, please, Councillor Rosie Dawson. I know that you are our rep on that. Would you like to go ahead and, and speak on this, please? Thank you. <clears throat> I, uh, I requested that this go on the agenda after attending the most recent Coastal Health meeting as the Town Council representative. As we know, during the initial stage of the pandemic, the MIU, the Minor Injuries Unit at Dawlish, was closed with staff and patients working from Newton Abbott Hospital as a designated COVID symptom-free zone. Timmouth Hospital, whilst outpatient services were suspended, was a COVID assessment area managed by ours and Timmouth's GPs to protect those still attending surgeries for appointments. The COVID clinic has now been stood down and planned assessment and treatments are operating again, but the minor injury unit is yet to open despite it being high season here in Dawlish. I have questioned this and asked for a date by which we may expect the unit to be open and fully functioning again, but have been told it will be at some point in the next two months. Several residents have contacted me having needed this service over the summer. There is growing concern amongst the people we serve. With our increased general and seasonal population and an increase in families struggling financially, which affects MIU and out of hours access when it's a 20 minute drive away, I feel we ought to be pushing the CCG for a reopening date or at the very least some clarity and reassurance. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dawson, and thank you for bringing this to our attention and requesting the item on the agenda. Um, it is a very important um, item and my next door neighbour was only asking me this evening when it was reopening. I see that Councillor Lowther has a hand raised, Councillor Prowse, Councillor, uh, sorry, Councillor Linda Petherick and then Councillor Lowther, Councillor Prowse. Councillor Petherick, please go ahead. Um, we have had a document which talks about what's going to happen and we are having a presentation. Surely we don't need to write a letter. We can ask them when they do the presentation. I have been to Newton Abbott. I had to go a couple of weeks ago because I had something wrong. So I had to go and get it seen to. I spoke to um, the nurses there. They the reason that they, the MIU got shut down was because there is a shortage of staff as well um, and they are expected to go back within the next few weeks. So um, I don't know, really see the need to write a letter when we've got some information in the document that we've been provided with. And also we can ask that question. Now, if people are gonna say, well, October's too far away, then maybe we ask to get a presentation within the next two weeks, but we really don't need to be writing letters when they are actually gonna come and talk to us. Thank you, Councillor Pedrick. Councillor Terry Lowther, please go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm able to support this. <clears throat> I think we do need to write a letter. Um, the MIU is very important to Dawlish, and I think we, we need to strengthen. I mean, you have, the proposal is that we ask for clarification when it's going to open. I think we ought to put a bit in there saying that, you know, to remind the CCG this is a, a very important facility for Dawlish. Um, we really do need it back, and we need it back as soon as possible. So, not asking just for clarification, but let's have a talk urgency please. We don't need to be aggressive, 
You know, we, we don't need to jump up down and demand that it's open tomorrow, but I think we do need to urge some sort of swift action. Let's get it open again. It's important. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Terry Lowther. I totally agree with you. Thank you. I know Councillor Powser had had a hand, hand raised and then Councillor Heath. Councillor Powers, please go ahead. Well, this is a matter I feel very strongly about, very strongly, because I fought alongside Councillor Clapworthy and Dr Whitehead for a very, very long time to get a minor injuries unit and then to get the hours extended. And it was a hard, hard job. And I was, in spite of COVID and all the other things, duly horrified when it didn't open, when it closed down. And I was told when I made inquiries that it was because there wasn't enough staff. It was always absolutely vital that we had a minor injuries unit during the height of the season with staycation or whatever you care to call it. Dawlish has been absolutely packed this month and we haven't had a minor injuries unit. It was it was absolutely, it's dire when we haven't got one. They must surely have some forward planning whereby they know when they're going to open it. A couple of months, that's not good enough. It should have been open before. It should have been open. If you can open a pub, if you can open all these other things, then there is one thing that we do need, and that's our hospital services on the doorstep. And I am... Very, I, I know what you're saying, uh, Councillor Terry Lowther, about not being aggressive, but it was such a hard fight to get it in the first place. And it is at the back of my mind that if we don't get it soon, we might never get it because I know how hard I fought. John Clapworthy was up and down all the time and Dr Whitehead was, well, he was, he opened the extra and it was, it was really vital. So I am very disappointed to think that we might get it in two months time. It's not good enough. I don't know. I, I, I think that the, the idea of having a, a, a special Zoom and a presentation within the next two weeks is excellent. We don't want to go another month. It's another month. Sorry to be so uh, well strong about it, but it's it's really important to the people of Dawlish and we are growing with all these new houses and all the people around and 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 I'm quite certain that September will be busy because there are people who go on holiday in September who would normally go abroad and are certainly not going to go this year. So I think it's very vital. Sorry, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prowse. So then Councillor Heath, Councillor Rosie Dawson, Councillor Martin Wrigley, and then Councillor Main. So Councillor Heath, please go Sorry. ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Right. Um, well, I, I feel quite strongly about this. That's why I originally put my hand up. I want to second the proposal. And the reason why is because I agree with Councillor Prowse and so on. In fact, Dr White was my doctor before he left. And um, he was very much of the local people. And I also know that when things are shut and people seem to be surviving, there are people on finance board to say, oh, we don't need it now. So the quicker that comes back, and to say we should wait weeks and weeks and weeks for it to come back, is not what our, our council should be doing. We should be saying, please, even telephone calls, get letters. We want it open now. And that's what I think we should say. But as somebody else has just said, say it very gently. Thank you, Councillor Heath. So we've got a proposal and seconded, but Councillor Dawson, please go ahead and then Councillor Main. Councillor Dawson, please. I just wanted to uh, to reiterate that, you know, as long as residents are concerned and are emailing us or shouting to us in the street about something, then that requires us to act, um, in, in my opinion. And um, I agree that, you know, with um, Councillor Prowse that sometimes you can end up lose, losing something if it's closed for too long and just going back to something that uh, Councillor Wrigley said at the very beginning of the meeting people are facing a lot of financial instability uh, financial ruin at the moment and I personally know of families who have struggled to get to health care because it's now a 20-minute journey uh, for people who have needed it and that that to me is not it's not okay for our community. 
Thank you, Councillor Dawson. Um, Councillor Main next, and then I think Councillor Wrigley, did you have your hand up? Councillor Main, please and go Councillor ahead. Councillor Linda Petherick, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I agree with absolutely everything that's been said by anyone, but what I would like I, I, I think, whether I can propose it, there's already been a proposal, that we um, bring, try and bring a Zoom meeting forward to, within the next couple of weeks, and then we can show the strength of our opinion rather than write a letter. Because to be honest, by the time we get a letter written and sent off and get a reply, we'll be due to have a Zoom meeting anyway. So that's what I would rather do, bring the Zoom meeting forward a couple uh, of within the next couple of weeks, if possible, that falls on Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Main. Councillor Wrigley, please go ahead. Councillor Wrigley. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, I find myself in violent agreement with Councillor Prowse. Second time in a meeting we agree on things, so that's excellent. So it must be, the, must be what we need to do. And I admire her passion and her fight for fighting for the facilities that we need in Dawlish. And absolutely agree if we let this say closed it will be gone so we've got to do that now i think we need to be careful about conflating this with the ongoing consultation which is what i think is happening with the meeting in october and trying to bring that forward and conflate the two issues i think would be disastrous because that consultation is a much longer term and wider thing so we need to be very clear and very precise and I think we have a single point and writing a letter actually translates into sending it by email which can be done tomorrow and I think we should be asking the clerk to send this communication tomorrow to the or as soon as humanly possible to the uh, uh, CCG saying when will the MIU reopen it is urgent and necessary and um, let's take the passion from Councillor Prowse's fight and actually put this into this and actually demand that this is reopened as soon as humanly possible. Otherwise, we run the risk of losing it and that would be disastrous. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Wrigley. So, we, yes, thank you. And then Councillor Moorhood. Chairman, I, I believe Councillor Linda Petherick was next. Okay, Councillor Linda Petherick, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I haven't got a problem with writing a letter in any way, shape or form, but what I'm saying is that we should bring the presentation forward because if you're going to attack it, attack it from all angles and bring it forward and ask them in, in that as well, because that's also going to be live on Facebook and people in Dawlish will see that and will see us bringing it up and will see us asking the question. So I think we need to do both things. Okay, thank you, Councillor Pedrick. And then Councillor Moorhood, please go ahead. I just wanted to add a little bit of embellishment, really, to things which have been said. It's some time now since the MIU opened, and it's not just the residents of Dawlish then who appreciate it. As has been uh, referred to, we have a much larger population here now. And on top of that, we're in a, a quite different position from, for example, Tynmouth or Shouldern or whatever. We have this huge influx of temporary holiday makers on the caravan sites. And that's exactly when you have little accidents with your children and so forth. And you haven't got all the things you've got at home to deal with it. And you need help. And I actually uh, didn't know that it had been closed. This was right at the beginning of the lockdown. And I had to pick up a friend who'd uh, hurt his head badly. I drove down to the MIU to find it closed. And I can assure you, it's not very funny trying to drive to Newton Abbott, especially through the traffic we encounter between here and Tynmouth, with someone who's bleeding profusely. So I have personal experience of the necessity for this. But my point is that we have a huge influx in the summer, and as Councillor Prowse said, we're probably still going to get a, an Indian summer, if you like, of visitors. We desperately need this open now, 
please. We need it more now than we ever did. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moorhood. So we've got the proposal um, which has been seconded to write an urgent letter um, asking for the minor injuries unit, the date of when it's going to open. Um, and we've got that seconded as well. So are councillors ready to go for a vote to Seven. support that, both, please? Both, Chairman, both councillors, Terry Lava and Mary Lava, have got their hands up, I believe. All right, OK, Councillor Terry Lauder, please go ahead. I think it would be in my advantage to defer to my, um, my colleague. <laughs> Okay, Councillor Mary Lowther, please go ahead. Yes, I was just adding to Councillor Moorhead's thing. Um, we, I, we have personal information about the costing. And I know recently it cost us £60 to get a taxi to Newton Abbott. And that was when somebody close to us was bleeding. So it is vital that we get this um, unit open as soon as possible. Thank you, Councillor Lowther. Thank you. So are councillors now ready to go for a vote? Councillor Terry Lowther, Councillor Heath, Chairman. Councillor Heath, please go ahead. Sorry, Chairman, I believe Councillor Terry Lowther wish to come back. All right, Councillor Terry Lowther, please go ahead. And I'll need to repeat really what I proposed to start with. That we write an urgent letter strengthening our wish to get this plane, the, the NIU open because it is so important. The, 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 the proposal in the, the uh, item on the, the agenda is, is almost just asking for the information. We don't want information, we want action. Um, Thank you. As far as the Zoom meeting is concerned, I've got no strong feelings. I, I just feel, I think, I suspect a bit a little, a little like uh, Councillor Wrigley does, that it is mixing two things. The, the Zoom meeting is, is designed for them to talk to us and give us information. Um, and they don't really want to come and be told things or have complaints or feedback or whatever. Oh, we're very well having it, but let's get the letter in first. Let's, we can carry on, if you like, later on, but let's get the letter in first. Thank you, Councillor Lowther. Thank you. I, I agree with that. So can we now go to the vote for that proposal that we write urgent for action? Councillor Heath, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Just finishing off, I, I think it's been actually said by Terry Lowther now anyway, but I, I seconded the motion. I thought it said that we would ask them to open the ASAP, but yeah. not the wording I heard earlier on, which is please tell us when, begging bowl in hand, you're going mm. to open it. We've got to be far more positive. We don't want them to say, oh, thank you for that. We're opening it at the 29th of October. No, we, we want to ask them, which is why I assume, if we, if we haven't, I'd like to put an amendment in. Um, we want to ask them, could they open it like tomorrow, next day? If not, why not? That's the sort of, I'll let uh, mm. our clerk do the wording on that, but that's the sort of proposal I, I thought we was uh, doing. Thank you, thank you. Well, it was, it was Councillor Prowse that worded it so excellently. Um, and then it got seconded by Councillor Wrigley, who's disappeared from my screen. Um, so, can I ask um, Councillor Prowse or Andrew, would you like to repeat the proposal? Yeah, that would help. Chairman, if I have it down correctly, you're wishing to write to the CCG asking in um, no uncertain terms when the minor injuries unit is going to be reopening. Thank you. And, that, it, and that it reopens as soon as possible. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Is, is that, as you want, you said, Councillor Pearls? Uh, well, I said it with passion and that doesn't quite come over in an email. But I'm, I, sure, I'm sure the wording will be um, open to interpretation, Chairman. Yeah, I, I think, um, I don't know whether you put this in the proposal or when you actually put it in the letter, that it is an urgent need now. Because, exactly. Yes, it's, it's the urgency. It's not yeah. in October. 
we are yeah. going to have a lot of older older holiday makers who we've always had a lot in september uh into october it, it's a when the children go back to school older people come down on holiday we need the minor injuries unit now not two months time so that's my proposal is it is an urgent need now due to the circumstances of staycation however you care to put that andrew thank you councillor prowse and then that was seconded by councillor wrigley who's disappeared from the screen but it's been it's been seconded by um councillor also approved by Councillor Lowther. So can we now go to a vote, please? All those in favour, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Oh, sorry, I'm Councillor Dawson. Excellent, thank you. And Councillor Dawson, would you like to vote, please? Absolutely for it, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Is Councillor Wrigley coming back? I've not heard yet, Chairman. Okay, but he, he did say approval earlier on in the meeting. Okay, so that is that carried. Thank yeah, you. And then just prior to moving on to the next item, I believe Councillor Dawson wishes to say something. Councillor Dawson, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, just to clarify, Martin, uh, Councillor Wrigley is having problems with his internet, so that's why he had frozen and I believe disappeared. Right, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So we have now come to the end of part one of our meeting, at which point I say thank you very much to all members of the public who've been watching live on Facebook and who've been with us during this meeting and all members of the press as well. We are now about to move into part two. So I ask, I say thank you and good evening to all members of the public and press and we now ask you to leave us so that we can proceed into part two of the meeting thank you andrew thank you